DACUM is the abbreviation for designing a curriculum. You'll notice that the reading for this section of the course is a little bit longer than some of the other readings. And it's really important that you spend some time going through um, all the details and getting a really good sense of how the DACOM process works. I'm going to provide an overview and identify the key things that are going to be really important, but it really is up to you to go through this process. I'm also going to remind you several times uh, through this uh, short talk here that this is an iter iterative process, meaning you're going to um, build a bit of your DACOM, maybe build most of it, and then leave it alone and come back to it and redevelop it, redesign it, and make some changes. You're going to be continually refining and making some changes. I'm also going to provide a, a tip that you can use to uh, streamline that iterative process. So the DACOM chart that we have, uh, uh, the blank DACOM chart, has uh, some letters and has got some numbers. The letters represent the goals, A, B, C, D, and the numbers represent the objectives. And the reason that we've got this naming convention, when you write your performance objectives, you identify them by the goal A5, for example, or E2, or F2. One. So when you're writing your performance objectives in that component of the assignment, you will identify these uh, sections of your DACOM chart. Very important. Now, this, this is an example for you to use, um, and it's a wonderful starting point. So goals. This is extremely important that you understand the difference between the goal and the objective. And the goals are really a broad bigger, broader description of what you want the students to do. Now remember, when you're dealing with performance objectives or when you're dealing with student performance, everything involves a verb. This is what the student will do. This is not what you're going to do as a teacher. This is not the way that you're going to instruct that goes into your lesson plan. This is what the student will be able to do. For example, carry out first aid skills is what the student will be able to do. Carry out is the verb. So the goals are the key, broad, general descriptions that the objectives lead up to. Now, with respect to the objectives, they're always in the square. And the objective is the specific skill the student will achieve by the end of the course. And it's a series of these objectives that will lead up to the achieved goal. So generally, the objectives fit into the goal. The goal is a broader context or a broader topic that the objectives lead up to. Uh, it could be part of a sequence. So if you think about a first aid example, perform CPR would be a an objective within the goal of of first aid. Now, which ones do you write first? Do you write down all the goals or do you write down all the objectives or can you go back and forth? It really is your choice. We do have some recommendations and there are some best practices around creating a day come or there's uh, procedures that you can follow, but it really is your choice. If you were to do the goals first, it may look something like this. You know, again, we're dealing with first aid, so dealing with breathing problems, fractures, deal with burns, control bleeding, deal with lack of, deal. So deal is a verb, you know, uh, control is a verb. So remember, with your goals and your objectives, you've got verbs. Right, And then if you were to follow along with this uh, process, so dealing with breathing problems, well, you determine if a person is breathing. You clear any obstruction. You perform pulmonary resuscitation. Notice the sequence. There has to be an order in this process. You wouldn't necessarily perform pulmonary resuscitation before you determine whether or not the person is breathing. So there's often a sequence involved. And again, if you take a look at your readings, there's several recommendations as to how to best set this up. Okay? So... What are some recommendations that I have in terms of this process? So my first recommendation is that, remember, this is iterative, meaning you're going to keep on working on this and refining it, and you're going to revisit it and revisit it. And it's often best to do a bit of work, go away from it, come back, look at it again, have another set of eyes, take a look at it. You've got a, a, a number of students in your class. 
post um, your DACM. Share it with your classmates. Get another perspective. Um, this is an iterative process. It's going to take a bit of time for you to do that, uh, to do this. It's part of the process. The other recommendation that um, I have, and I, uh, this is a, a, a common recommendation with anybody who's doing curriculum design, is that you use these wonderful things called sticky notes. So instead of writing this out on a form like that Word doc that we shared with you, you might want to print out that Word doc or do this on a whiteboard, but you do a bunch of sticky notes. And um, this page here may seem like an exaggeration exaggeration well it, it obviously is but at the same time going through and posting all your ideas onto the sticky notes and then being able to move them around to group them to chunk them um, there are times when you might have a sequence um, that is going to be dealt with in a certain area some sequences will lead to a certain goal some goals actually might need to be broken out into uh, more objectives so the whole process of uh, using sticky notes to brainstorm and, and continually put your ideas down is extremely important. Now remember, every single one of these sticky notes has to have a verb and it points to what the student will do. This is key. This is all about the student performance. The student will be able to, or the student will, the student will do this. It is extremely important that you're focusing on what the students are doing. This is not what you're doing as the instructor. You aren't putting the instructional uh, directions in there. You're not saying watch a video. You're not saying, you know, introduce yourself to the class. You aren't doing any of those things. You're identifying what a student will do. Again, Iterative process, use the sticky notes, combine the sticky notes, move things around, and then at some point, share with your classmates and colleagues, um, and then you'll definitely be on the right track. This is a fun process, and it can also be a, a frustrating process, because it takes a bit of time to get used to thinking through the process of looking at what a student needs to be able to do to be able to complete a body of instruction. But stick with it, and you're going to reap the benefits.